Okay. Y'all ready? I just got to ask you that. Are y'all ready? Because I'm going to tell you right now, tonight or whenever you're looking at this here, this is where the rubber meets the road. Okay. And we about to go all in. So real quick, the title of this series is How to Survive and Thrive in the Midst of Satanic Attacks. All right. So for you to get a clearer understanding of what the Holy Spirit is trying to say to you tonight, we got to give you just a little bit of review. Not going to do no expounding. Number one, God wants you not to just exist through the attacks of the enemy, you know, just existing, just kind of just going through. God wants you to, to survive all of Satan's attacks. He don't want you to just, you know what I mean, go through that with fear, thinking that this current attack is going to be victory for Satan, or it's going to leave you just barely making it, or just hanging in there. No, this is not how God wants us to survive. We're going to exist in the midst of these things. We're going to outlive the attack. We're going to stand strong in it. We're alive in the midst of this attack. We are conscious. We are aware. And not only are we conscious and aware, but we are focused on what God has said. Now, when we start talking about thriving, oh, this one here, you know, we're, we're existing, but it's a certain way that we're existing and are alive in the midst of satanic attacks. We are thrivers. You are a thriver. And this is what it means to thrive. Number one, you are growing, developing well, and you have vigor. In other words, you got energy, you got zeal, you got zest. Oh, glory to God. You got, you got the strength of God while you're going through the attack of the enemy. Now, the enemy's making attacks on you. We're going to break that down real quick. And then secondly, okay, in the midst of your growing and thriving, you're growing and developing well. You're growing and manifesting that passion and that energy and that excitement because you know that you're the winner, that you're the head and not the tail. You, your mindset is fixed on the formula of Jesus Christ. And when I say the formula of Jesus Christ, I'm talking about how Jesus dealt with things, how he handled Satan, Satan's kids, environmental conditions. You are literally, you know what I mean, operating in the character and the characteristics and the expression of Jesus Christ. Then when we start talking about thriving, that's going to cause you to prosper in anything you put your hands to. You are a prosperer. You're a thriver. You are a grower. You're growing. You're not stagnant in the things of God. You're growing. You're moving forward. You're getting to understand God better. You're getting to understand how Jesus defeated the enemy and how he's given you victory. And you're now accepting that victory and you're walking in that victory. Your, your speech is changing. Your thinking is changing. Your behavior is changing. Your actions in the midst of and your response to the enemy's attack is definitely, definitely improved. And your response time to be able to put that word on that devil, put that rebuke on that devil, literally change your behavior in the midst of the attack and, and begin to now exhibit and exemplify the Lord Jesus Christ and how he did things. You're doing it just like Jesus. So you're prospering and you're showing forth the fruit of prosperity, the fruit of spiritual prosperity. Then you're flourishing. Yeah, a part of thriving is you're now seeing change in your life. You're seeing things begin to grow and develop and enlarge. You're flourishing in the things of God. And in that flourishing and under that flourishing anointing, that, that endowment that God has released in you, you know you got the touch of God on you. You know you got the talents of God coming through you. You know you are the temple of God. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, I'm telling you right now, you, you're in a win-win-win situation. It's just impossible for Satan to defeat you when you know this kind of stuff. Are you hearing what the Holy Ghost is saying? Are you hearing what the Word of God is saying? Are you hearing the mentality and the spiritual fervor and vigor that God is creating in you? Yeah, this is some exciting times right now. For the world, it ain't that exciting. It's crazy out there. But for the child of God that's that's jumped on the word of God and you getting you getting pure truth, you finding out what these words mean, and now you make the decision, this is what I accept. This is what I believe. This is my identity. I'm a thriver and a survivor. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. So now God says, I'm going to cause you not only to flourish, and a part of the expression of flourishing in God is that you will begin to now gain in wealth and gain in possessions. Oh, yeah. Oh, hallelujah. This is all for the glory of God. You are thriving for the glory of God. 
You are thriving so that you can share with other people how to do it. And then to thrive, this is you, this is your mentality, this is your expression, and then this is your reality. This is your state and condition in life. And this is where God is bringing you to. God's going to bring the fruit of this to manifest and to bear in every area of your life. So now God says you're going to rise. A part of thriving is rising above the attacks of the enemy. A part of thriving is rising to the top of your potential and capabilities for the glory of God, by the glory of God through the strength and the touch of God. Look at this here. This word thrive also means to achieve success and shine. This is why, glory to God, you are changing. You are thriving. You are shining. People are looking at you differently. People, you, they just, you know, you walking in with that anointing on you. You walking in there with that thriving mentality. It's totally changed your persona. Your personality is changing. You, the smile on your face is like, it's a smile of confidence. It's a smile of a victor, not a victim. You walking in the things of God and getting better and wiser, and you're getting closer to God. I mean, you're fearless. You're not operating in any kind of fears. You're walking like you are born of God. You are walking like you are of God. Pay attention to that. Are you hearing? Are you listening? You got to listen. And then you got to accept what God is saying. These are the words of God spoken to you, spoken to me. I'm accepting it. I accept everything that God says about me as a child of God. You got to accept everything that God says about you as a born again, spirit-filled child of God, spirit-filled Christian, one that's Christ-like and endeavoring to be more Christ-like each and every day. Look at this here. This word thrive means to expand. So not only is God increasing your wealth and increasing your possessions, which identifies you as a flourisher, as a thriver, God now turns around and is causing you to achieve success, to shine for the glory of God, and to rise. You can't stay stagnant, not as a thriver. You can't stay stagnant, not as a child of God that knows they are born of God, they are of God, and have overcome the world, have overcome Satan, has overcome your environmental condition and circumstance. You may be in it, but you're not of that circumstance and environment. You're not of that attack from Satan. You in it, but you thriving and surviving in the midst of it. And you manifesting the glory of God. Oh, hallelujah. If I'm talking right, just, solid, just shout a hallelujah. Just shout a glory to God right now. Just shout you a good thank you, Jesus. And, oh, hallelujah. That's the trifecta of praise. All right, so now watch this here. To expand. You are expanding in that wealth. You're expanding in your possessions. You're expanding in your growth in God. You're expanding in your development in God. That's spiritual developing. You're expanding in the strength of God. This is all about thriving. This is all a mentality. This is a, a perspective change. This is a, a perspective in God that's like Jesus. This is how Jesus walked in the earth. Thriving, always, all right? So now you're not only expanding but everything God is promising and God has released power so that everything in your life turns out well. I know you believe it, but you have to believe it. And that belief, which is faith and expectancy, is, there's something powerful that takes place. The speed of God's manifestation of power when you release expectation to your faith, expectation after you release your faith. Oh, glory to God. I mean, you like, God, I'm expecting it now. Or God, I'm expecting this to happen in seven days. Or God, I'm expecting this to happen in a month. You know, when, when the circumstance and the normal formula says 30 days and you got your faith built up to strong and great faith level and you release expectation, you say, God, I'm expecting it to happen in 20. Well, if it happens in 23 days, when that normal time for that thing to manifest is 30, you are ahead of the game. And you manifest in the fact that you are born of God and you have overcome every circumstance, every situation. And not only are you an overcomer, but you are thriving overcomer. Oh, glory to God. Look at this here. To fly high. Not only is things going to turn out well, not only are you rising to the top, to the peak of that situation, to the peak of victory over Satan's attacks, but now you're not only doing that, but you're turning out well. So you have risen above Satan's attacks. You've risen to meet Satan's attacks. You ain't afraid no more. 
You ain't worrying no more. You're not stressed out. You like Satan, really? All right, let's go to work. So you gotta understand something. That survival mentality with, without a thriving mentality, it sounds like this here. You know, God's just trying to teach me something. You know, just God's trying to teach me how to be strong. God's trying to teach me how to weather the storm. You know, God, God's trying to, you know what I mean, teach me through my, my trials, tests, and tribulations. No, he's not. Talking about the Father God. No, the Father God is not trying to teach you something through your tests, trials, and tribulations, persecution. No, those are attacks from the devil. And what God is trying to teach us is that you have already overcome them. Now start acting like you're an overcomer. Start talking to that thing like Jesus talked to the problems. Satan released trials, tests, attempts on Jesus' life, and Jesus overcame them all. The Holy Spirit was not trying to teach Jesus how to be strong in the midst of temptation and tests and trials from Satan. No, literally, you go to the garden or the wilderness temptation. Jesus Christ was already stronger than the devil. He was already strong in the word. He was already strong in his expression of his identity, who he was in Christ. When the Holy Ghost led him into the wilderness, the Holy Ghost didn't lead him into the wilderness to strengthen him. He led him into the wilderness to whoop that devil's behind. And Jesus did it because he was already prepared to do it. You are already prepared to whoop this current situation that you're dealing with. You are already prepared to thrive, but you got to believe that. Jesus went into the wilderness now after fasting 40 days, you know what I mean? When Satan showed up and, you know, and started unloading on him, Jesus started unloading back. And Jesus didn't have this thrival and this, I mean, he didn't have this survival mentality. Oh, God trying to, God trying to strengthen me through my trials and tests. No, he knew he was led by the spirit of God right into the middle of that wilderness. And he was led into the spirit. He was led by the spirit of God into the wilderness for a reason. What that reason was to whoop that devil's behind. And from the day Jesus came out that wilderness, he was whooping that devil's behind on a regular. When you change your mentality and realize that the problems and the challenges that create discomfort in your life are, is not God trying to teach you how to handle discomfort. You are under attack. You are under attack and God has already equipped you to attack back. You got to make up your mind that you're going to thrive and not do this traditional what we've been taught. God has taught you how to survive. He's given you the greatest example, Jesus Christ. And you are born of God. Now it's time to act like we're born of God. It's time for us to tr trust and, and step out there and prove the word. And that's a thrival mentality in action. No, this is not woe is me. This is not, oh God, why is this happening to me? This is happening to you because you're under attack. Just that simple. Now, you may not want to go that route. You may not want to go that route because to go that route means you got to take God now at God's word. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you got to realize that look, if you got the victory, then you got the victory. If Satan's under your feet, then Satan's under your feet in any area of his attack. Now, watch this here. Now, we start talking about Satanic, anything characteristic of Satan, anything that's connected with Satan and Satanism, anything that's connected with his way of doing things is Satanic. I mean to tell you, if it's extremely wicked and evil, it's satanic. It's from Satan. It's not from God. And all we got to do really is look at what's going on and what's coming at us. We got to be able to discern, is this satanic or is this God? Now, when tests, trials, and tribulations come your way, if it's from God, it is called discipline because you are disobedient. I'm going to tell you right now, you look in the Old Testament, God did that stuff to, to Israel and, 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 and disobedience and, and when they was into Satan worship. And, and so God let bad things happen to them and God did some bad things to them. But you a child of God, you born of God. You are not with the mentality of the children of Israel. You are doing your best to obey God and get better, live better, do better, all of that. So when negative things come at you, that ain't God trying to teach you something. That ain't even, that's not even God trying to teach you something because, you know what I mean, you did something wrong. You got to understand something that when we do something wrong and stop standing on the word of God, stop resisting Satan, stop rebuking Satan, 
he's going to take advantage and he's going to gain ground. And God's got to watch him gain ground because if God has taught you how to stand, if God has taught you through the word of God how to break the power of the enemy and you choose not to do that, then Satan is going to be trying to put a chokehold on you. And you can break any chokehold the devil puts against your life, brings you to, puts you through. But you got to believe that. And you got to, number one, believe that God is not putting these negative, evil, wicked chokeholds on you to teach you a lesson or to punish you. He punished Jesus. Jesus bare all of our infirmity. Jesus took on the bruises of God for us, not you. So if you're dealing with any difficulties in your life, trust me when I tell you, it is not God doing it to you. You are at war. You are in a battle. You are under attack. But God has given us the solution. Let's move on. We're going to get to deal with these solutions. Now, this word attack. Now, you can recognize the attacks of, of the devil. Attack means aggressive action against you. Aggressive actions with weapons formed against you. This is, this is Satan. This is Satan's work. Bringing forces against you. Like in a battle. In a war. This, this, is, this is what the word attack means. This is what Satan is doing. All this negativity in your life. This is not God doing this to you, causing this in you. No. Now, God is going to allow it because you allow it. But when you start resisting and rebuking that devil and you do it the way Jesus resisted and rebuked that devil, you're going to get the same results that Jesus got when he was walking on the planet. And he's praying for you that you get those results. But you got to believe it and you got to step out there and express who you are and express the authority and power that God has given you through the word of God and in the name of you. You got to start rebuking some stuff and you got to start expecting God to do it. You got to start expecting God to perform their word. And they will, because God responds to faith and expectation. Listen, you can be a, you can be a, you can be missing the mark more than you hitting the mark. But if you respond with great faith and expectation, God's going to answer your prayers. It's just that simple. OK, because Jesus paid it all. And when we start thinking that it is our good deeds and our holiness and our sanctification that's bringing the blessing on us. OK, now now, you know what I mean? You out of order. And don't get me wrong. You and I, we got to do those things. We got to live sanctified. We got to live, you know what I mean, according to the truth and obey God's word. But your obeying God's word, you know what I mean, is not the thing that causes God to bless you. God's going to bless you because you operate in the word of God with the faith and the expectation, and your mind is made up to obey God and do what God says do. But while you're in that process, you could be failing miserably. God's still going to bless you because your faith is intact. Now, when you are in the midst of a process, Satan's going to try to make you feel unworthy. He's going to try to make you feel condemned. And that's going to affect your faith. It's going to affect your expectation of God because you're like, oh, God can't bless me because I did this. God can't bless me because I did that. God says, I've already blessed you. And you just need to live up to your expectations. You need to live up to your standards. And if your standards are low, if your expectations are low, you're only going to express what you see in God, what you see as your possible outcome. And we're changing that right now. We bumping up your outcome expectation and getting you a thriving mentality. We get you believing in a thriving mentality. You will overcome and you will smash every attack of the devil. And that's exactly what you're doing right now. That's exactly what's happening. And the reason why it's happening is not because you're so much living better and you are, but why it's happening is happening because your faith is stronger. Your expectation is released. You are going from stronger faith to great faith. It's your faith. That's pleasing God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And for those that believe, they believe that God is. It's impossible to believe God. If you come to God, you got to first believe that God is. I'm talking Hebrews now. Believe that God is and believe that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek them or seek him. You got to diligently seek God. You got to be like, I am not giving up on God. I am not quitting. I'm not backsliding. I'm going to get what God has promised. And what that means is, is that every time God bless you, you want to say thank you to God. Best way to say thank you to God is to say thank you to God. Second best way to say thank you to God is begin to change your ways and just be better. Live a victorious, conquering life. 
conquer cussing, conquer lying, conquer all of the things that the devil is attacking you with. That's all they are is attacks. If you steal everything that, that's not locked down, you got a demonic force that's got you in bondage. Stop that stealing and show that you are a conqueror over thievery. Yeah, and you can. But it is not your thievery that's causing God not to pull out all their blessings on you. It's because you, you, your thievery has got you doubting God now. Got you doubting because you got that, you got that old thinking. It's how you hear it. You, if you're hearing from an Old Testament lens, then your whole hearing is off. Jesus died on the cross to free us and to take from off of us the penalty of breaking the law. You're under grace right now. God's unmerited favor, God's love. God loves you, even if you're crazy. God loves me, even when I'm crazy. But God responds to our faith. God responds to your expectations. And then God says, I will bless you on credit. I will bless you up front because you respond with faith and expectation. And because you respond with faith and expectation, God can now manifest the blessing. So in the midst of the craziness that sometimes we get ourselves into, we can get ourselves into some serious craziness, right? But God will bless us even in the midst of the craziness. God will bless you in the midst of your craziness. Why? Because you're releasing faith and expectation. And because you're releasing faith and expectation, because of your faith and expectation, God's power can flow into your life. And God knows that if he keeps answering your prayers and keeps hooking you up, that you're going to change your ways. You're going to change your behavior. You're going to start talking like God. You're going to start learning more about God. All right, let me, let me stop right there. Let me move on. All right. We talk about aggressive, violent actions against you from Satan. Satan trying to always bring violent, aggressive actions against you to try to get you to doubt God, to try to get you to leave God and turn to him. Ain't that stupid? You're going to leave God and turn to Satan? That don't make sense. OK, but if you don't know that it's Satan attacking you. If you don't know that it's Satan trying to hurt you, trying to injure you, if you believe that it's God trying to teach you through your hurts and your injuries. Now, that's how we were taught until we started studying the word of God and found out it ain't God trying to hurt his children that love him and obey him. I'm talking about the father of God right now. No, we got to look at Jesus. Jesus is our new pattern. Jesus is our new way. All right. So watch this here. Now, you know, you start hearing getting these harsh and negative thoughts coming into your mind. That's the devil. That ain't, that ain't God. That ain't the Holy Spirit. All right. So now. 11 things that you got to know on how to defeat Satan's attacks. These are the actions that you got to release. Now, you, you got to have your mind renewed. You got to have your mind renewed to thriving. You got to renew your mind to how to survive. And you're going to survive through thriving, not through doubt and unbelief and crying and fear and all of that. That's not how you survive. That is how some people are surviving. But that's not how God has ordained for you to survive. You are to survive with a thrival mentality, not a doubt mentality, not a fear mentality, not an anxiety mentality, not a, not a uh, I'm failing mentality. No, a thriving mentality. So now, first of the 11, and I'm not going to go through all of the 11. You got to go out. You have to go back to the, 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 to the to lesson number one in this series. And I covered all of this as an outline. Now we get into the nitty gritty. So now, number one, know and express your identity in God. In the midst of every attack, in the midst of every environmental situation, in the midst of everything that Satan throws at you, you have to express your identity in Christ. You have to let that devil know. You got to let that circumstance know. You got to let the people that Satan's using know, I am born of God. I am of God. Oh, hallelujah. All right, so real quick, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, this is some powerful stuff. And you need to understand something right now. You need to understand that God's word has got to become your final authority. God's word has got to become your final authority. In other words, it doesn't matter what it looked like. It doesn't matter what it feels like. What God says is what you're expecting to become your reality. 
That's how you got to get down. That's how your mentality has got to be. So now, 1 John chapter 4, verse, all right, I'm going to read through all of them, but I'm not going to expound on them. I'm going to start expounding at verse 4. Look at this here. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. You might have come across a couple of them or two. Okay, but this you know, and by this you know, the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of Antichrist of which you have heard that it is coming and now it is already in the world. Now watch this here. If you deal with somebody and they don't believe in Jesus Christ, they are and of that Antichrist spirit. They are against Jesus Christ. They are anti-God. They are Satan worshipers. They may not be down with the with the with, with all of that hardcore Satanism, but they are Satan worshipers by default because they don't believe in Jesus Christ. They don't believe in God the Father. They don't believe in the Holy Spirit. Now, this may sound a little harsh, but it's truth. And truth sometimes is harsh. You hit people with the truth, you know what I mean? They can think that you're being insensitive and that you're being hurtful and you're being judgmental and you're not, you're being truthful. So when you say to somebody, if you reject Jesus Christ and you reject God, the Father and God, the Holy Spirit, you are a Satan worshiper because you can't worship, you can't, you can't not worship something. You worship in something. Your allegiance is somewhere. This is what we got to tell them. But we got to tell them in love. Look, I'm not trying to say this to make an enemy. I'm trying to say this to, to make you aware of how this spiritual thing works and how you're going to be dealing with God after you die. So you need to go ahead and deal with God and get your business straight with God right now. This is what you got to tell them, saints. You know what I mean? They hurting. All right. So watch this here. Verse four. Verse four. Check this. You are from God. Now I'm in a New American Standard Bible right now. The, the, the King James says, you are of God. You are from God, little children, and have overcome them. You are an overcomer. You are of God. Let me do it again. You see that? Born of God. That's you. That's me. That's every Christian that believes and names the name of Jesus. That's every Christian that believes that Jesus came to the earth and did what he did. And, and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John lays it out clear. If you really want to get to know God, Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John over and over and over. And before you read, ask God to open your understanding. Ask God to help you understand the word. Because when you humble yourself like that, and that's what humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God is. You, you're willing to hear what God's got to say. And now your hearing needs to be accurate because you need to know what these words mean and not somebody else's interpretation of these words. You got to do the studying. Got to go and find out what these words actually meant when they was first said. It does not matter. You know, in our lifetime, we've seen words change meaning. Not that the words changed meaning, but people changed the meaning of the words. I don't want that. I'm not with that. And I can look like the egghead. I, no, that's not what that word means. That word means this. But I think and feel it means this. Okay, I get that. But you're in error. That word originally meant this. From God's standpoint, God has not changed the meaning of what they say. Talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So now watch this here. Verse 5. Check this one. Check this one. They are from the world. Therefore, they speak as from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. He who knows God listens to us. He who is not from God does not listen to us. By this know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Now, what I like about the King James, the King James says it like this here. Let me get there real quick. The King James Version says, watch this here. You ready? You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. This is Satan's kids. These are the folks that reject Jesus. These are the folks that, that are atheists and agnostics. They are of the world, verse 5. Look at this here. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. The world knows them. It hears them. There's fellowship with them. You ever notice how worldly folks can, they, 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 because they're doing Satan's characteristics, they're doing Satan's bidding, they all down with each other. 
they hear each other, they feel each other, okay? Because they operate in Satan's way. Look at this here, look at this next verse. Verse six, we, talking about you and me, we that have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we that have been filled with the Holy Spirit, been born again, we are of God. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna work this one. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. Oh, oh, we can know God. You can know God better. That's me. I'm like, God, I want to know you better. I don't want to know you the same way I knew you 10 years ago. I want to know you better. I, I want to I want to I want to amp up my relationship. This has got to be your attitude towards God. You got to wake up and say, okay, God, I'm not scared to get to know you better. I want to know you better. Look at this here. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Watch this here. See, when you dropping knowledge on folk, you dropping verses on folk, if they don't want to hear you, and we're going to break down this word hearing in a minute, if they don't want to hear you, if they want to dismiss you and be dismissive to you, it's because they don't know God. But if you if, if, if you drop the truth and they hear you, that's because they have God. If they, if, they, if they receive the words of God coming from you, now you got to ask them, hey, are you born of God? Have you been born again? Are you saved? And if they say no, get them saved. Just look at them say, come on, let's pray. And just, just simply say a simple prayer. And you tell them, say, repeat this after me. We're going to get you born of God right now. You're going to say, repeat this after me. Say, 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 God. And you tell them, repeat this. You ain't got to yell it. You know, repeat it. God. They're going to say, God. And you're going to say, I know I'm a sinner. They're going to say, I know I'm a sinner. And you're going to say, but God, today I repent. And they're going to say, today I repent. They may not even know what repenting means. But just pray that prayer. And then you can explain it to them later. And you're going to say, Today, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And they're going to repeat that. Today, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And today, I accept forgiveness of my sins. And they're going to repeat. Today, I accept forgiveness of my sins. And you, you're going to say, and, and you're going to tell them to repeat this, say, and according to the Bible, and they're going to say, according to the Bible, I confess. They're going to say, I confess. Jesus as my Lord. Jesus as my Lord. And I believe. And they're going to confess, I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. And they're gonna say that God raised Jesus from the dead. And then you're gonna say, according to Romans, they're gonna say, according to Romans, they don't even know where Romans is. They, ain't, they thinking Romans, what, what, what's that? That's one of them, them soldiers from back in the day. No, you're gonna take, this is one of the books in the Bible. And they're gonna say, and they're gonna say, according to Romans, and you say, and, you, and you're gonna say, I believe I'm saved. And then they're gonna say, I believe I'm saved. Then you're gonna say, hallelujah, amen, thank you, Jesus. And they're going to say, hallelujah, amen, thank you, Jesus. And then you're going to look them right in their eyes and say, that's all God requires. They're going to be like, huh, that easy? You're going to say, yes, that easy. And then you're going to tell them, I did mine like 20 years ago, 10 years ago, two years ago, 40 years ago. And then you're going to start explaining to them what they just did and what God said about it and why God made it so easy. And you're going to look them in their eyes and you're going to say, it's not your stopping sinning that got you saved today. It's your believing in the word of God. It's your believing in what Jesus Christ did. And it's your accepting Jesus Christ. That's why your name is written in the book of heaven. That's why God's going to help you in life. That's why God's going to show you how to turn your situation around. And that's why God's going to turn your situation around. And then you're going to look at him and say, and to show your thanksgiving to God, he wants you to be obedient. He don't want you to live like Satan. He wants you to live like Jesus. And you look at them and say, you ready for that? They're going to say, yeah. I said, God's going to give you the strength. God's going to help you. And I'm going to stay in there with you. Give me your name, your phone number, blah, 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 if you don't have that information. Now you got a baby. Now you got a spiritual baby. Oh, hallelujah. It's just amazing. You get 10 of them, you're going to have your hands full. Because now you got to birth them babies. You got you know, to feed them. You got to get them to come to church. You got you got, you got your hands full. And God going to bless you each and every way. So watch this here. We who are of God, verse six again, we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. So let's break down some words. Remember, we're talking about expressing our identity in Jesus Christ, expressing our identity in the Father God, expressing our identity in the power 
of the Holy Spirit, expressing our identity. So that's what we want to do now. We want to start looking at how to express our identity in Jesus Christ. All right, so number one, the first thing you got to do, let me see where my time is, okay? I got about nine minutes. The first thing you got to do, the, this is the first thing coming out the gate. This is after you done been saved, you gave your life to Jesus, you're a Christian. You growing, you know how to praise, you know how to worship, you know all of it, you got the basics down pat. This one here, this one here, th this one is a non-negotiable. Number one, you are of God, little children, and you have overcome them. So you got to understand overcoming, and we're going to deal with this. You got to not only understand overcoming, you got to understand knowing God. You got to also understand hearing God, all right? And then, and then when you get those three down pack, you're an overcomer, you know God, and you hear God. What that does is it keeps you fresh. It keeps you connected. It keeps you consistent, all right? <clears throat> God's number one thing to try to get you in a frame of mind, in a current, in a, in a new speech pattern, in a new behavior pattern, is getting you to know that through Jesus Christ, you are instantly an overcomer of Satan, his attacks, his people. You gotta, you gotta get this one down pat. So now, this word overcome, you ready for this? All right, here comes the first definition. And we ain't broke down the definition in a minute. Overcome means, watch this here, Nikeo. Nikeo is where Nike got his word conqueror from. This is overcome. It's the same as the Greek word Nikeo, the same as the Greek word conqueror. All right, so this is what it means. Watch this here. This is you. This is not what you're becoming. Don't let that old tradition creep up. Don't let that old survival and I'm still working, I'm still thriving, I'm still trying. You're not a trier no more. You're a doer. You are born of God. You're not being born of God. You are born of God. And you are becoming more like God in your expression, but you born of God. As he is, so are we in this life. You born of God, you got the glory. That's why we're learning how to make this all work. So the word overcome, you are of God, you are born of God and you have overcome them. Listen, this is, this, this is past tense. But if you don't have that kind of thinking and that kind of mentality, you are living in a survival mentality and you are not thriving. And I'm not trying to be negative, but you need the truth. Until you change your thinking, you'll never change your ways. Until you change your perception, you'll never change your conception. If you don't change to accept what God says, you'll never conceive the power of God to make it your current reality. Now, I got to say, I got to get strong with you right now. Because if you, if, you, if you doubt this, man, you tie God's hands up. You hold up, you blocking up the power of God. You are constipated when it comes to the flow of the power of God. We don't want that. Satan wants that. Satan wants you blocked up. Satan wants you, he wants you in a, in a mindset to where you doubting, you, you half believing, you wavering. No, no more of that. We thrivers. Look at this here. To overcome, Nikeo. Look at this here. Number one, first definition, to conquer. Number two, to subdue. Number three, to prevail. Oh, this is good. Number four, to get the victory in any attack of the devil. So how am I, how am I gonna do that? Pastor, how, how, how do I get this active in my life? First, you gotta accept it. You got to accept the identity change that you are an overcomer. You got to just take God at his word. You're an overcomer. And greater is God in you than Satan and anything he can throw at you coming from this world, coming from his children. First of all, when you operate like that, you release the glory and the anointing and, as they say, the energy of God in your situation. And when you explain to people 
who you are and who you born of, they're going to treat you with respect. They're going to treat you different that because, because you're not going to just sound like those people that hear the word and don't do the word or hear the word and try the word. You're going, you're going to sound like a hearer and a doer. Now you may not be 100% got it all completed, but what you got creates power in your life, creates the, the, the glory and the impact of God in your life. That's if you're only doing 1% of the word of God. You only got 1% physically active in your life. And you got a whole lot more than 1%. I know this. Watch this here. This word overcome, nikeo, it also means to carry off the victory and to come off victorious. You carrying victory around in you. You are walking victory in manifestation. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what step you are in the process, but you are victorious right now not becoming victorious. Your physical circumstance is changing, but you are born of God. You are victorious. You got to accept that. You got to let that come alive in you. You got to let that nurture and minister to you. And you got to let that admonish you. Let that change your perspective so God can change your conception. So that God can change your outcome. Look at this here. Look at this here. This word nikeo also means being born of Christ, born of God, you are victorious over all of his foes. Okay, all right, time out. Do you know the attack of the devil on you is not even really because of you, number one? Satan's not attacking you because he just don't like you. He's attacking you because he don't like Jesus. And he don't like the fact that you created in the likeness and the image of Jesus. And he sure as heck don't like you because of this number one fact. You gave your life to Jesus. You dropped him. Now you done hooked up with Jesus. I'm going to tell you what that's like. That's like having a boyfriend or a girlfriend that drops you and they hook up with somebody that treat them better, dress them better, feed them better, riding them better. I don't mean sexually right now. They got a whip, they whip is better. They just better than everything that you ever done for them. And they love them and they better. They thinking better, they talking better, they producing better. In the natural, if a man or a woman they break up with somebody or does somebody break up with them and then they start doing better or oh, that, that mess you up. That mess you up, especially if you going down and you getting worse, that mess you up. All right. Well, that's how Satan is right now. All right. So when Satan was your man, when Satan was your God, he was doing his best to beat you down. And, and then if he, and if he, if he promoted you, it had conditions attached to it. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden you, you, you started hearing about how good Jesus treat people. And then you drop Satan, Satan all messed up right now. That's why he attacking you so hard. He attacking you so hard because you looking good in God. God got your whip, right? I'm talking about your car. Now you got your riding, right? He got you eating good. He got you taking care of yourself. You know what I mean? You ain't drinking no more. You ain't drugging no more. You know what I mean? You ain't cussing no more. You ain't, you ain't doing that evil and wicked. You ain't doing that satanic expression no more. And then he see you working on stuff, just getting more like Jesus. Satan messed up right now. And now he can't take you to the lake of fire no more. He, you lost, you, come on now. And that's why you and I ought to be rejoicing. And that's why it's crazy for you to think that God is using Satan's tactics to get you stronger. No, you getting stronger when you hear that you are a conqueror and you know what a conqueror is. And then when you get out there and you start acting like a conqueror and you start talking like a conqueror, then God turned your situation around. Now you got the supernatural touch of God. You got the intervention of God on your situation. That changes you forever. All right, watch this here. All right. When we start talking about, okay, overcoming, we're talking now, you know what I mean, about Christians, us, who hold fast our faith, even unto death, against all of our foes, 
even unto death against all of our temptations and persecution. Oh, that devil's attacking. But we like, we are not going to turn back on God. We are not going to go backwards. We're not going to backslide. We are not going to get weaker. We are not going off course. We are thriving in the name of Jesus. We're thriving in the name of the Father God. We're thriving in the name of the Holy Spirit. No, Satan, you can't talk us into this church mentality. No, we are conquerors. You can't, you cannot attack us into a sheep mentality. We are lions. We ferocious for God, but we love him and compassionate. But when it comes to you, Satan, oh, we straight up monstrous to you. We conquerors against you. All right, look at this here. All right, okay. All right, watch this here. This is the definition of overcoming. It also gives, and I like this judicial kind of flavor on this here. It means to be a conqueror in Jesus Christ. Not only are we conquering and holding fast and standing strong unto the death against all of Satan's attacks, persecutions, all of that. And then we're thriving in the midst of it and whooping this cat, making him turn back. But it also means when one is arraigned or goes to law to win the case, maintains one's cause. Let, let me break that down. So in other words, you know what I mean? You, 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 you've been accused of some stuff, right? And they call you to court. And, and they, they summons you to court, but yet you know that you got a lawyer. You know you got an advocate. You know the Holy Spirit is your lawyer. And you know that, that all of the charges have been dropped because of Jesus and Satan trying to get you to think that you still under criminal persecution. And as an overcomer, and you know that Jesus done paid the price, he done, he done set you free, all right? You've been arraigned, you, you've been pardoned. And that devil try to get you to think that you're still guilty, that you still gotta pay the price and serve the sentence. But you like, no, I don't. I have been set free by Jesus Christ and I believe it. That devil gonna try to talk you back to the way you know what you did and you know how you used to get down and you know you ain't changed. You gotta look at that devil and say, you don't, you don't understand. My identity is in Christ. I have overcome everything that you've attacked me with. Everything that you've tempted me to get involved with. Everything that you have stolen, killed and destroyed in my past is over with. God is increasing me. God is expanding me. God is thriving me. It has gotta be your mentality. And this is what you gotta share with other people. This is what you got to share with these folk that 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 they 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 kind of stuttering in God. They kind of they kind of uh, you know Satan and got their head all messed up. You got to come in there with this kind of truth and let them know God will back this truth. And then when they see you thriving and prospering and gaining and 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 wealth and possessions, they see you now rising up in the midst of every scenario. So even some of the stuff that they tried to pull off on you. And 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 when you see them rising up against you or you you just overcome everything that they're doing and then you continue to all of your situations turn out well and you flying high for the glory of God, you thriving. You got to explain it to them. Say, look, I'm a thriver and God is with me and God is for me and I am born of God. Can't be afraid to say that. And you got to let them know, I'm not God. I'm not Jesus. I'm born of Jesus. But what that means is, is that God has blessed me on credit and God has blessed me because he know I'm good for it. And every day God sees changes in me. I start looking more like Jesus, talking more like Jesus, acting more like Jesus every single day. And not only does God the Father and the Holy Spirit and not only the Lord Jesus sees these changes, this growth, this developing well, they also reward me. They reward. This is what you got to say to these people. They got to know that they're dealing with the God that's in you. Greater. I'm going to end on this one here. Greater. It's the, it's the, Greek, it's the Greek word mid-zone. Mid-zone. Greater. This is what it means. Three things. Larger, elder, stronger. I'm going I'm to wrap up on this here. When, 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 I look, when I discovered this definition from the original language, I was like, larger, elder, and the word elder, the, the, the elder one threw me off a little bit. You know, like kind of like an elder in the church, you know what I mean? And then stronger. So I said, I said, I said, Holy Spirit, what, what do you mean here? 
I, I said, I, I'm, I'm, I, I need some insight. So the, the larger was pleasing. So greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Larger is he that is in you. Larger is God that's in you. God is larger and bigger than your situation. And God is larger and bigger than Satan. More powerful, just larger, more impact. But you got to have your faith in God. You got to get to know what God can do. I'm talking about the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, right? So now this word elder. Elder is he in you. And I looked up this, I didn't even look up the word elder, but I know the context of elder. That means a seasoned, wise, knowledgeful. God is more seasoned than the devil, older than the devil, wiser than the devil. God is more, oh my God, more wisdom and understanding than that devil. And the attack that that devil is throwing against you, God is like, listen, I done seen this before. I got you. I'm the elder in your life. I'm the larger one in your life. And then that last definition of the word greater, which is the Greek word midzone, means stronger. So that when you get a revelation, wait, wait, you mean the God that's in me is larger than the attacks of the devil, wiser and older and more mature and more seasoned and more, watch this here, and more experienced than Satan and all of his attacks and all of his kids. And the God that's in me is stronger than anything Satan can throw. That ought to create peace in you. That, that ought to create joy in you. That ought, that ought to make you more of a doer and a doer because you glad about the position of this new identity. You glad about the place that God has put you in because of this new identity in Christ. You glad about the conditions of your life changing for the better. You say, but you don't understand. Sometimes it's so hard. Why are you thinking like that? That's some thrival, busted, defeatist kind of nonsense. You keep letting that grow, you'll be doubting God. You keep, you, you keep letting that grow, you ain't going to get nothing from God. What do I do with this? You know, it's so hard. It's just difficult. It's just, you don't know, understand. You, you, you can't feel what I'm feeling. I don't want to ever feel that anymore. I used to feel like that. I don't ever want to feel that no more. And here's my love to you. Cast that down and take on the feelings of strength. And the only way that we can take on the feelings of strength, we got to know what God promised. So here's the promise of God for your situation. This is how you talk to him. This is what God promised you. This is what you got to do to get back in the right direction and the right flow with God. Number one, stop complaining. Number two, stop calling what you have based on what you see. Number three, stop agreeing with Satan. Now you can put that in any order you want. Stop agreeing with Satan. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So if, it, if you feeling this all hard, maybe you might not be yoked up right with Jesus. I didn't say you're not saved, but maybe you, know, you might not be following Jesus' formula for this situation. I know you're not because you're talking like a non-thriver. And, and, and beloved, I, I'm, I'm done with this one. You are going to have to yourself not talk like a non-thriver. You're going to have to start talking and believing like a thriver. You're going to have to stop believing like a non-thriver. You got to change that. You got to make a decision. I change my ways to line up with Jesus's ways and Jesus's ways is thriving. All right. Then, then once you make that mindset change, now we teach you how to do it. Now we teach you your identity. This is, this is who thrivers are in the eyes of God. They're, they're overcomers because they're born of God. They're, they're, they're filled with the greatness of God. They're filled with the wisdom of God, the strength of God, because God is in them. God is in you. Then not only that, they hear God. They hear God give the description of who you are. You are not of this world. You are not trying to be accepted by this world. You are not trying to accept this world and the way they do things for Satan. Nah, we don't get down like that. 
and 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 we'll let you know about it in a loving way you know what i mean boys can't be with boys girls can't be with girls boys are to be with girls girls are to be with boys and boys are to be with girls when they get married and all that kind of stuff you know you can't be breaking god's rules now you can't you better thank god the grace and mercy of all no god says stop your lying stop your cheating stop all of that crazy stop your jealousy stop your envy stop that hatred stop that rebellion and disrespect stop all of that all right because that that's the way satan gets that and we got to say okay god give me the strength to stop all of that but the only way that you're going to do that is because you're born of God and you know that. And you know that being born of God means that your expression in life has got to change. And now that change can be facilitated. It can happen because you've renewed your mind. You are an overcomer. You can overcome any attack, any persecution, any temptation of Satan. And then you turn around and add to that. Okay, you add into that, 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 that you know that the greater one lives on the inside of you. And you know that you hear God, you hear the word of God, and you're not rebelling in your heart and in your thinking against the word of God. And then you know, oh, you done come to know something about God. You know and have learned something about the word of God. And so now when tests, trials, and tribulations and attacks come from Satan, you like this here, a thriver's mentality says, let me at him. God, can I get him? Can I get him? God says, get him. Now you coming in there and you dealing with Satan and all of his attacks the way Jesus dealt with Satan and all of his attacks. Remember, you're born of God. You are of God and you are a thriver. Well, my time is all gone. Hallelujah. It's been wonderful to be with you. We will wrap this part, this first uh, point. There's 11 of them. We're going to wrap this one up the next time we get together. And we're going to deal with not only hearing God, but knowing God. So tonight we dealt with overcoming. We dealt with the understanding of God being the greater one on the inside of us. We're going to deal with hearing God. We're going to deal with hearing God in all of the areas that we need to hear God, and especially in the midst of the, the attack of the enemy. you got to be able to hear God. And you will recognize God. We're going to deal with this here. You will recognize God. You'll be able to hear God when you start learning the word of God. When you start breaking these words down and you start understanding what God has said, you'll hear the Holy Spirit talking to you in the midst of the attack, showing you how to smash and whoop that devil, make him flee. And then you're going to now not only hear the word, but you'll know it. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, let's wrap this up. Amen. Well, Father, we just praise, worship, and magnify your holy and majestic name. We thank you right now for, Lord God, this viewer, that viewer, those that are viewing this message. And we thank you, Lord God, for as they have released their faith and their expectation to see your word manifest and become their physical reality and change them, change their environment, change even the people that are around them for your glory and for your honor. Lord God, those that hear you will hear them. And those that respect your word will begin to respect them. And that Lord God, as you increase them with goods, as you increase them successfully and help them to achieve greater success, as you Lord God, cause them to grow and develop well and just manifest the strength in your energy and excitement, that zeal and zest for life. And Lord God, as you begin to cause them to rise and, and, and not only increase with goods, but to Lord God, achieve and maintain that success and rise high and Lord God begin to just turn out well and, and Lord God just totally just soar for your glory and soar by your power and soar by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for being our God and we decree that we are your children and we are born of you, Father. We're born of you, Lord Jesus. We are born of you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you for causing us and showing us and developing in us, thriving, overcoming, conquering mentality, seasoned in your love, seasoned in your grace, seasoned with your compassion as we reach others and share with others the truth that we have discovered. These things we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. I'm Apostle Edward B. Haynes, Resurrection Life Christian Center Church International here in Hartford, Connecticut. God bless you and thrive as you survive.